Do some sounds make you want to completely rage? You're not alone. We'll talk all about it. Stay tuned. That's what's up next. Hi, my name is Natasha Daniels. I'm a child therapist. I make videos for kids with anxiety or OCD. This episode is brought to you by NoCD. I want to talk to you today about what is misophonia and how a lot of people misunderstand it. And that can be super annoying. So misophonia is not just an annoyance of sounds around you, but it's an annoyance of very specific sounds that tend to trigger your limbic system, creating a lot of anger and a lot of rage all at once. And for some people, panic and anxiety. It is a really common condition that does happen to people who also struggle with anxiety or OCD, but you don't have to have anxiety or OCD to have misophonia. So misophonia is somewhat newly researched in the last decade or so, and we're hoping more research will come out, or at least I am, because I've struggled with it my entire life, to help come up with new treatment options for those of us that are struggling. But in the meanwhile, I think it's important to know what it is and what you can do about it. So it is not your average, ugh, just chew with your mouth closed, that noise is bothering me kind of problem. It is, I'm going to chop your head off if you don't stop chewing like that, I'm feeling so angry kind of problem. And that is different because a lot of times parents will look at kids with misophonia and will just be like, look, we're all bothered by your brother's mouth being open while he's chewing, but we're tolerating it. Why can't you? Well, there is a difference because if you have misophonia, it is a physiological issue. And so you're not wanting to rage. You're not wanting to have this much distress and upset, but you physiologically can't prevent that. And that makes it really hard because you can't outthink your physical reaction, but you can outthink the situation. And that's what I want to talk to you about today, because a lot of times, we blame everybody around us. Stop chewing like that. Stop clicking your pen. Stop playing your game on your keyboard like that. Or stop touching your game controller like that. Those are my triggers. The clicking and the mouth sounds are super annoying. But it's not fair for me to go around and control my entire house, to tell my daughter, stop eating like that, to tell my husband, stop playing like that. Um, I do want to because it is really upsetting, but that's not fair because the problem doesn't lie with them. The problem actually lies with me because I have misophonia and my ears are hearing sounds in a way that other people aren't hearing them. And it's triggering a response in me that isn't being triggered by other people. So yes, sounds might be annoying to other people and they may not like it either, but they are not being triggered to the level that you and I are. So the first step is knowing what sounds trigger you. I know my short list of sounds. And if you're not sure of what sounds uh, can trigger you, then Google misophonia and look up. There's normally a big list of sounds that are very common under misophonia. A lot of mouth sounds, clicking sounds, water sounds, those are all very triggering for most of us with misophonia. And I know there's certain behaviors in my house that are gonna drive me bonkers, including uh, my husband having his cereal. That isn't gonna work out for me or him sitting there and playing his video game. That, that sound on that game controller is not gonna work out for me. Now, is that my problem or is that his problem? It's my problem. So figure out what your triggers are. What are the sounds that are about to make you go see red and want to chop everyone's heads off? And then know what situations will that happen in. If I'm in the kitchen and I know that there's sounds in the kitchen that trigger me, then it is my responsibility to have something in the kitchen to survive the sounds that are gonna be around me. And so I might want to have headphones. Noise canceling headphones are a godsend for people with misophonia. Getting a good pair is so key. I actually found that my AirPods do the trick just as well. So I've moved to my AirPods and I have them in my pocket. And if I'm in the kitchen or if I'm, if I'm on the couch and I know that those are areas where I am most likely to be triggered by my family members, I'm gonna have my AirPods on me so that if I'm sitting there and I'm cozy and I'm comfortable and I don't wanna get up, but I see someone coming by with a bowl of cereal, which is like my nemesis, I'm gonna pop those babies in my ear so I don't have to hear that. I'm gonna put my playlist on and I'm gonna zone out um, auditorially so I don't have to hear that noise. Because once you hear that noise, it's almost like a trigger has been set off and it grows and grows and grows and the rage just overwhelms you to the point where you want to actually physically stop that person from making that sound. It can be confusing because you might think, 
I love this person, or this is my kid, or this is my mom, or this is my dad, or this is someone I really like, this is my friend, but I wanna chop their head off right now. That's misphonia, that's not you, right? We can't control our rage response when we are in the middle of being triggered. But we can control avoiding being triggered and what we do when we are triggered. That's our responsibility, not theirs. So knowing what situations are a danger zone, having AirPods or headphones that you can use to cancel out the sounds that are gonna upset you and get out of the situation, if possible, when you've already been triggered. If I'm sitting at the table and I'm feeling my rage is already going up because somebody's eating their food in the most obnoxious sort of way, if it's possible for me to leave the table and go and relax and do something for a little while and then come back, I'm going to do that because I can't stop that domino effect from happening once it's been triggered. So I hope this helps. I know misophonia is such a hard thing to deal with, but remember, we have to own our own issues. We have to find our own ways to block the sound. We have to know what our triggers are so that we can prevent that from happening to ourselves. Well, I hope you find the sparkle in everything you do, and I'll talk to you again next Thursday. Take care.